Kevin Barry on the 20th of September 1920 feloniously, willfully, and of his malice aforethought, did kill and murder number 4603629, Private Marshal Whitehead, a soldier of His Majesty's forces. Between November 1920 and June 1921, 10 men were executed in this hang house in Mountjoy Prison, put to death by Britain's senior executioner, John Ellis, part-time hangman, full-time barber from Rochdale in Lancashire, who had also hanged Sir Roger Casement in 1916. The execution procedure was claimed to be a very precise operation, using a formula based mainly on the weight of the condemned person to determine what length of drop he should have to break his neck instantly. When the 10 men were exhumed recently, I understand there were detailed medical examinations carried out on the remains. In the case of at least three of those men, there was no apparent damage to the necks. The implication, if it's true, is that those men didn't die of broken necks and died instantly, rather they strangled slowly at the end of the rope. Your awareness of the other nine men has never been as great as the fame of Kevin Barry. He was the youngest to be executed, and he was the first. And that fame was certainly enhanced by this ballad, written by an expatriate in Glasgow, one of several ballads and poems written shortly after Kevin Barry's execution. But who were the other nine men, and why were they hanged? Patrick Moran and Thomas Whelan were the only people convicted and found guilty and sentenced to death for Bloody Sunday. Both of them protested their innocence. The four who were executed with them on March 14th were Frank Flood, Bernard Ryan, Patrick Doyle, and Thomas Bryan. And they were all convicted of levying war against the king after a failed attack on auxiliaries in Duncondra. In April 1921, Thomas Trainer, who was the oldest, aged 39, was convicted of the murder of Cadet Farrell on Drumsey Street. The last two to be executed in Mountjoy during the War of Independence were Edmund Foley and Patrick Marr. Both were convicted for taking part in the escape of Sean Hogan from Knock Long Station in 1919. Kevin Barry was captured on a raid for arms. A British Army truck with 10 soldiers was making its daily trip from Collinstown to Monk's Bakery in Church Street, Dublin, to pick up bread supplies. Barry and 25 other volunteers took up positions. When the truck arrived, the soldiers were held at gunpoint and began dropping their arms. But one soldier, Private Harold Washington, fired, blowing off part of the scalp of a volunteer. In return, this bullet smashed through Private Washington's mouth, killing him. The whole episode was a shambles. Four more soldiers were shot as the volunteers retreated. Kevin Barry's gun jammed and he hid under the lorry. He was found and arrested. Had he shot one of the soldiers? Yes, as he later confessed to his sister, Kathy. When he stood up after discarding the third round, he lifted a flap of the lorry, fired, and got this man. Kevin Barry was found guilty of murder and sentenced to hang. The execution took place at 8 o'clock on the morning of November the 1st, 1920. It must have been dreadful for his mother especially, you know? Uh, I'm sure she felt it more than any other member of the family felt it. The soldiers shot in the ambush in Church Street in 1920 were brought back to England. Private Marshal Whitehead, who was shot by Kevin Barry, lies today in Halifax in an unmarked pauper's grave. Colin Connolly, RT News. <laughs>